Good morning, I'm Amelia Chambers. I'm Sophia Kiesel. I'm Daniel Manguel. I'm Alina Jones. I'm Richie Alva. Have you ever witnessed any of your peers hand electronic cigarettes, maybe in a parking lot or a school campus? For those who do not know what an e cig is, an e cig or electronic nicotine delivery system for an FDA drugs. This device contains a liquid nicotine base that, when vaporized and inhaled, it is used to simulate the experience of smoking tobacco. As shown here on the diagram, the nicotine cartridge holds around liquid nicotine. This could be based on different varieties of flavors. e cig companies have stated that the use of e cig is a better option as it doesn't need the combustion needed for a traditional cigarette. As the overuse of vaping is becoming a problem, especially amongst the youth, it's been a very important point of action to address the following question. To what extent can the convenient access of electronic cigarettes affect the youth under the age of 18, resulting in increased rates of vaping and, and its impact? Through detailed research, it was concluded that the UCB cigarettes, a spreading epidemic, poses a threat to the U.S. youth under the age of 18. To combat this, governmental intervention needs to be taken immediately. Statistics have shown an increase in the use of vaping. From 2011 to 2017, there's a 10.2% increase amongst high schools and a 2.7% amongst middle schools. This has shown a drastic increase in the use of vaping. As the amount of individuals that vape increase, there is also a correlated increase in the amount of health risks that they are prone to. For instance, in the oral health of a vapor, vapors can experience excessive coughing and even scratchy throat. Then they can also be prone to higher heart rates and blood pressure. Then in the respiratory region of their health, they can be at risk for higher inflammation and infection rates in their lungs. In addition, as observed in a study done by scientist Judy Zolkoff on the effect of e-cigarette vapors on adolescent mice, it was observed that various reproductive issues were present. This was mainly due because the exposed mice had sperm counts half the value of the unexposed mice. In addition, there were also signs of plaque buildup in arteries pointing to atherosclerosis. Though the study was done on mice, it is directly representative of the physical impacts that adolescents can experience from vaping. In addition to the physical impacts of vaping, there are also various behavioral impacts as well. This is mainly due to the high amounts of nicotine present in most e-liquids. Nicotine is an addictive, odorless and flavorless chemical, which, when ingested, <coughs> stimulates the adrenal glands, causing a rapid release of epinephrine or adrenaline. In association with this, there is also a rapid release of glucose into the bloodstream. This then results in higher blood pressure, heart rates, and even respiration levels. The use of vapes not only impacts the users themselves, but also the environment and those around them through secondhand dealings. Especially amongst teenagers whose bodies are constantly reacting to change, any direct and indirect use of e-cigarettes will cause many detrimental effects. As a result of all these multiple medical hazards, many governmental organizations like the FDA have started to institute and establish regulatory laws. Here's a simple overview of the course of actions and events across the establishment on two regulations by the FDA that have helped in the exposure to vaping and nicotine. The Family Smoking and Prevention and Tobacco Control Act was signed by President Barack Obama in 2009. This gave the FDA the power to regulate the tobacco industry. This act also places, research, places restrictions on marketing tobacco products such as e-cigarettes to minors. This act also requires a more larger visible labels on packaging, and tobacco companies also need to seek FDA approval for any new tobacco products. In 2015, the United States Senate passed the Child Nicotine Poisoning Prevention Act. This act was also signed by President Obama and was made to help children with child nicotine poisoning. I'm showing this map here, there have already been many countries that, that have either restricted or banned the action of vaping. It's highlighted by this green arrow here, here one third world country, Venezuela, has banned vaping and threatens to punish users with fines up to $8,000. Another specific, another specific example can be observed in the country of Panama. In 2009, Panama placed restrictions by banning the importation, distribution, and sales of electronic cigarettes. We must follow this example and have stricter regulations on electronic cigarettes in the United States for the safety and health of the youth. Because the FDA has per instituted such prohibitory laws, this has caused an increase in economic loss. Individuals, such as company leaders, who are against the institution of laws regulating access to e-cigarettes propose harm to the overall governmental economy. Over the past couple years, e-cigarettes have become the most commonly used tobacco product among teenagers, increasing 78% among high schoolers and 48% among middle schoolers. This increase has made popular vape company Juul dependent on youth users that have allowed them to maintain 73% of all e-cigarette sales. 
Economists say the restrictions of e-cigarette access will cause a decrease in, in sales in the vape industry, considering that such restrictions include reduced flavors and significant features that have brought widespread attention by teens. This graph shows the increase in e-cigarette sales over the past couple of years. Notice that the sale increase follows the increased production and introduction to smaller, more convenient devices and youth appealing features. The cost of regulating e-cigarettes involves many expenses, for example, increased taxes, changing labels, reducing flavors, and the fact that each product has to apply for pre-market approval. This graph describes the net economic impact of e-cigarette regulation, which concludes that customer surplus, which describes a customer's willingness to pay for a product and the actual price of the product, will decrease, reducing the benefits of reductions in smoking in half in order to account for the lost customer surplus. Another form of regulation is excess tax. A study done in Minneapolis reveals data from two e-cigarette companies and the sales before and after the tax increase. The sales were significantly below expected values in the subsequent three periods. This form of regulation negatively impacts the number of adults who use e-cigarettes as a transfer from smoking tobacco because of the increase in prices. Despite the negative economic effects that accompany regulating the e-cigarette, Doing so ensures the safety and prevention of any long-term effects. According to Obesity Fitness and Wellness Week, health in a transparent pod are attractive flavorants to the youth population and hold a high cardiovascular toxicity. When heated, these can decompose into harmful or potentially harmful constituents. Proven on a molecular level, nicotine has had a gateway effect to other drugs such as narcotics. When mice were primed with nicotine, there was an enhanced effect of cocaine after 24 hours of priming and seven days of priming. These hyperactivity levels were risen due to the enhanced release of dopamine, the feel-good hormone, giving off a sensation of euphoria leading to addictive tendencies. What adolescents and adults don't know are the long-term effects that can accompany them into adulthood, such as addiction. This graph shows the expression of the gene ARP involved in neuroplasticity. As you can see, there's a significant difference between the nicotine triggers in adolescents versus adults. The nicotine triggers synaptic development, a key process in learning. What can be concluded is that adolescents are more likely to learn the nicotine habit. Because the child brain is constantly developing, it's necessary to take governmental intervention. By raising the age limit and running a permit-based system, products can be regulated through thorough IV checks. Another solution is to ban from conveniently accessible retail stores, including online purchasing. Through this, the purchases would only be through directly through the company. The only implication that comes from this are the secondhand sales and the decreased revenue of the company. Lastly, to educate students through third party organizations. Because the usage is rapidly increasing, it's necessary to follow a plan implementing all three solutions to not only educate, but regulate the e-cigarette. What questions may you have? Thank you. Sorry, I wanted to write that one question. You guys are good for your standing right now. We'll start over on this end. Um, uh, Alina, in the future, what changes would you make to your group norms, and how would you expect those to improve your presentation? So in the future, one change that I would make to our group norms would be to arrange more mandatory meetings, because some of our members, like Daniel and Sophia, had various sports events and meetings that were mandatory for them. And so we would like to have more group meetings where we can all practice and thus better perfect our presentation. Okay. Um, next up. Reflecting on your colleagues' work, so what they did, which one had the greatest impact on your understanding of the problem? Looking at Alina's lens, I, she discussed all the medical problems that associated with e-cigarettes, and in my perspective, I discussed how it was bad for the economy, but looking how, how bad the e-cigarette is from her perspective, I understood that even with these economic impacts, it still is necessary to regulate. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my throat. What's an example of a compelling argument from one of your peers' reports that was decided not to include in the presentation, and why didn't you include it? So, um, in our presentation, 
Alina talked about secondhand smoking, but it wasn't gone into depth because it's not directly the child smoking it, so it wasn't as much of an impact. Okay. Reach. Um, what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own research? Um, something that Amelia stated was the the actual governmental intervention, like what we would actually do, and how that affected my research is that it shows why we should do these things because it actually does affect the youth, as mine was the social perspective of how the youth uses these products. It actually showed a very good reason of why we should be banning these type of products. Right. And Daniel, have, now that you're done, uh, what would you be considered to be a gap in your team's research? I consider it to be a gap in my team's research would be in Rishi's social perspective because um, we wanted him to interview a student to just get first-hand information or just ask them about our topic so we can get kind of just an understanding overall. All right.